Kenneth Chisibro focused on the most vulnerable areas of power transfer, according to newly revealed conversations. Welcome everyone in today's video. We're going to tell you Trump blindsided by massive primary loss. A collection of documents published this week reveals stunning new facts about Kenneth Chesbro, a once obscure conservative attorney who drove the strategy to maintain Donald Trump in office, despite his defeat in the 2020 election. But before we proceed, if you're new to this channel, remember, go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. Chesbro's communications with Jim Troupas, a top Trump campaign lawyer in Wisconsin, show that Chesbro argued just days after the Navi 3 2020 election that generating a cloud of confusion by presenting dueling slates of electors would be enough to prevent Joe Biden from becoming president. The 1439-page document dump, released as part of a settlement in a lawsuit brought by Democratic officials in Wisconsin, also provides a deeper look into the mind of Chesbro who became known as co-conspirator five in Trump's Washington, D.C. Indictment brought by special counsel Jack Smith and pleaded guilty to conspiring to file false documents in a related case brought by Georgia prosecutors. The emails and texts suggest that Chesbro was focused on areas of power transfer that had little safeguards, such as the procedure of counting presidential electors by Congress on January 6, 2021. Jesse Bro noted that these susceptible areas could be exploited by Trump allies who are eager to pursue novel and eccentric legal theories. Jim Troupas, Trump campaign attorney, talks at a Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee hearing. Jim Troupas, a Trump campaign attorney, talks during a Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee hearing on Capitol Hill in Washington on December 16, 2020. Jim Lo Scalzo took a pool Chessy Bro clung to hope that his scheme was working at every stage, even as courts blew out parts of it. And when it all went apart, he privately slammed former Vice President Mike Pence, whom he claimed surprised the Trump camp by refusing to agree to their radical idea. Here's a look at some of the key observations in the new documents. Chessy Bro began January 6 on a high note, asserting loftily that he and his colleagues had made history by putting into motion a scheme that may prevent Biden's triumph. He texted a photo of himself among Trump supporters gathering at the Washington Monument at 1.24 p.m. that day, shortly after Trump completed addressing his supporters nearby. Jesse Bro later marched to the Capitol during the melee, following a group that followed InfoWars presenter Alex Jones through the restricted Capitol grounds but did not enter the building. Hours after the National Guard helped clear the Capitol of the last surviving rioters and a frustrated Congress, reconvened to complete certifying Biden's victory, Chesbro began peddling conspiracy theories about Antifa perpetrators of the Capitol attack. He further proposed that Trump put this behind him by inviting Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris to coffee on Inauguration Day. He could lighten it up with a couple of well-placed jokes. Chesbro wrote in text to Troupas, a clear misinterpretation of the situation like he wants to make sure Joe feels comfortable calling him for advice in the difficult days ahead, or we brought Joe over for coffee, because he wants to ensure that Joe invites him four years from now. Most significantly, in the same chain of texts to Troopas, Chisibro lashed out at Pence, saying he was a lot to blame for this fiasco and proposing an effort to criticize Pence for deceitful conduct that led to this chaos. In the weeks preceding up to Jan, 6. Trump pressed Pence, aided by Chisibro and other friends, like as Rudy Giuliani and John Eastman, to obstruct the certification of Biden's victory as president of the joint session of Congress. However, Pence ultimately rejected the effort. I now think Pence had decided by then not to do anything to press the envelope or create a test case, but decided not to be straight with the president, he wrote. If I am correct, Pence offered him false hope. He allowed Trump to hear sound legal views from Rudy and Eastman, which gave him optimism, but was dashed when Pence abruptly crushed them at the conclusion. Why did Pence do this? Even if Trump lost all legal cases. Chesbro's proposal to keep Trump in power was based on the Trump campaign, presenting alternate slates of presidential electors to Congress of from six states won by Biden 
in order to spark a controversy that Pence could exploit to refuse to count Biden's elect to legitimize the other slates. Chisibro advised the campaign to guarantee that legal challenges were underway in each of those states, allowing them to claim that the alternate electors were merely a backup plan. However, Chisibro told Troupas that those cases did not need to be active on January 6, when Congress convened to count electors, because nothing would prevent Republican lawmakers from refusing to count Biden's vote. On reflection, I think having the electors send in alternate slates of votes on D.C. 14 can pay huge dividends, even if there is no litigation pending on Jan. 6 He wrote in an email to voters on D.C. 8 There's nothing in the Constitution to prevent the Senate now, if it wishes, from holding hearings with testimony to decide if the election was stolen in one or more states before voting on which slate of electors should be counted. Again, even if Trump lost all the legal cases and none are still pending. Chessybro spent far more time than previously thought figuring out how to work around the long-established rules of the Jan. Six joint session of Congress, particularly its limits on the length of debate when objections were raised to electors from certain states. The Electoral Count Act of 1887, which has overseen presidential transitions for 137 years, limits debate to two hours each state, with no politician speaking for more than five minutes. Chessy Bro's efforts to extend the Jan. Six session and used the resulting pressure to whip Republicans into line against counting Biden's votes, were almost completely dependent on Pence agreeing to find a way around those restrictions. Anything Pence can do unilaterally to slow things down will obviously be of enormous benefit to senators who support Trump, but who, standing alone, would find it difficult to resist pressure to put an end to the discussion. Shisebro wrote in an if he has the will to do it, Pence could stand as Horatius at the bridge, he said, and help ensure adequate time for debate, shielding the Republican senators from a politically dicey cloture vote. Chessbro's concern about timing grew as he started focused on the details of the Jan. Six session such as Congress century old practice of adopting the session's rules three days in advance via a resolution agreed by both the House. Politico emphasized the importance of this resolution days before Chesbro became concerned about it. When the resolution passed without a word of debate, Chesbro began looking for ways Pence might still avoid the constraints Congress put on itself. He forwarded to Troopies a Politico link to the revised session regulations. Makes it hard to force Pence to allow for unlimited debate, Chesbro lamented. Jesse Bro saw indications of hope everywhere he looked, even when things seemed to be going wrong. Trump sounds so forceful that maybe Pence has actually agreed to do something, he wrote to Troopies early in the day on Jan. 6. Referring to a speech in which Trump repeatedly chastised Pence for his apparent refusal to accept Trump's proposal. When sin. Ron Johnson told Troopas that he couldn't give a slate of electors straight to Pence because he couldn't accept unsealed mail. Chisebro said that this could be a clever maneuver by Pence to force a delay. And on Jan. 4. When sin. Chris Van Hollen hinted at Democrats' plans to raise concerns about Trump's newly revealed phone call with Georgia election officials, which would become the focal point of Trump's Fulton County criminal case. Chisebro saw an opportunity to capitalize. If Democrats bring this up in a debate, they will deviate from the act's restrictive parameters. Perhaps Pence believes that this opens the door to an unlimited debate on Georgia, he remarked. Chessy Bro and Troopas imagined a particularly radical scenario in which neither candidate received 270 electoral votes on January 6, resulting in a contingent election for president in the House. They predicted that then-Speaker Nancy Pelosi would decline to allow a vote because... That's all for today's video. Republicans may win in the unique state-by-state -state count, and she may become acting president by default. But none of this happens unless Pence freezes the count, Jesse Bro explained. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.